Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer Termel, and Lesson 69 is the Watch It's a Hustle Part 2, my first engineering analysis of the banking system after studying some social credit and economics for the first time. When interest plays part of an agreement, if you're the one who owes, you better not get laid up or you'll find yourself between a rock and a hard place. It's downright dangerous. That's one reason why the Bible, Deuteronomy 23.20 says, To a foreigner you may lend upon interest, but you shall not lend upon interest to your brother. Unquote. Then Christ came along and told us that we're all brothers. That tells us that we should not lend upon interest to anybody. Another reason is that when the banker lends each of ten brothers ten dollars to get into the game and demands that they pay back more than was borrowed, he creates an economic competition to the death. Since if I succeed, the other must fail because we are not both able to repay more money than was put in the game. We must constantly try to capture each other's markets since both of us can't survive. Note that if the banker did not ask for interest, there would always be enough dollars in the game to allow everyone to survive at all times. When there is no interest, it is safe to lend your spare so that your brother may play. To play is to work. The game is to work. To score in the game is to produce wealth. To win is to produce more wealth than you consume in the process. Where there is not enough money to go around, the weakest, the young, and the old get knocked out the fastest. I'm tired of hearing of old people eating dog food and seeing babies die of starvation on TV just because of a faulty system of distribution that can easily be fixed. Because of the flaw in the distribution system, the government promotes less production and even destroys crop energy. When we claim that this is silly, the economists answer, quote, destroying crops is a very vexing moral problem when millions are starving. But if the stored crops are given away or sold at a fraction of their cost to other countries, the government's plan will now show a deficit, unquote. That's why people have to starve, so we avoid a deficit. I suppose avoiding a deficit let them sleep a little better after they destroyed those crops, and while 50 million babies died of starvation last year. The solution to the starving babies and underfed old people is to simply recuperate the real energy costs of the food by selling to the starving babies and letting them owe us for that food interest-free. Ask only for the food energy that we lend, and the babies have a chance. Insist on interest, and the baby's debt will double and double till we know they won't even be able to pay back the interest. And so, to lend to the babies enough to survive would not be as profitable as putting it in the bank, where it'll earn interest. And so, the government's plan would show a deficit if they saved those babies. In the name of economic priorities, we let them croak. Croaking babies is the inevitable result of a system flawed by the use of the interest device. To lend that food to the baby with no interest attached is to perform barter of energy between generations. Keep the baby alive now and he will keep you alive when he's older and you're retired. The strong take care of the weak as opposed to the strong killing off the weak. Pretty easy choice. Those babies now become a market for all the food that our farmers can produce. And since in an interest-free system where what you want, or sorry, where what you have is what you get credited for, there's an incentive to work. And it's a pure incentive to work. Under the interest system, there's a hysterical need to work in order to survive. And all can't survive. Interest is the main cause of unemployment. This is how it affects the working population. Let the average return for an enterprise say be 14000 and let the threshold survival be 12000 When the Bank of Canada raised the interest rate, it meant that those who were just breaking even are now losing and get knocked out of the game for a purely financial reason. Understanding the devastating effects of interest in an economic system sheds a different light on the old slothful servant story in Bible, Matthew 25, 19. Who mm, knew that by now? That's the servant who, being the weakest of the servants, is given only one credit and proceeds to bury it rather than take part in the game of trade, even knowing that his master is one who reaps where he does not sow and expects at least the interest. 
he returns to his master what is yours and is branded slothful and cast out into the alley where men weep and gnash your teeth with the rule defined as to everyone who has abundance will more be given but from him who has not even what he has will be taken away that servant's action was a gesture of defiance against the rules of the game where all must work to survive but all may never survive there must always be losers in a game where the interest rule applies interest perpetuates the notion that in order to exist one must work this is inconsistent with our future since as the lever of technology gets longer and longer the burden of man gets lighter and lighter Television and computers will replace bank clerks, store clerks, insurance clerks, librarians, assembly lines, and many others. This terrifies most people because the only way they have access to purchasing power is through work. Only those with work get the money to buy the food to get the strength to work to get the money to buy the food to get the strength to work to get the money to buy the food to get the strength. We know that there is an abundance. But it is kept under key because only those who have the privilege to contribute to its production can share. If we stick to the present system and step 50 years in the future, only those three men who press buttons will get any money. And the only way for the rest of us to get any is to tax them. The present system of distribution is unacceptable. There is a better way. All shall have a share in the Corporation of Canada. They will receive a dividend on the power of the machines. And as the machines replace more and more workers, that condition will be a release from the work if the extra energy wealth scored by the more efficient machines is shared. It will not be economically punished as it is now. If the machines score 20 million pairs of shoes, the dividend for everybody will go up since there's now more energy shoes to be shared. The dividend will progressively displace the wage as the machines progressively displace man. So do not fear losing your jobs to the machines as long as you get the robot's paychecks. To continue to insist that the only way man will ever get the title to goods is to work will only get us deeper and deeper into the bog of job creation schemes. If the creation of jobs is the only way we now have to get money to the people, the solution is very simple. Replace every bulldozer by 20 men with shovels. And if there are still those who need work to get the money, take away their shovels, give them spoons. Real Cahuette's greatest example. It is readily obvious that the purpose of an economic system is not to provide jobs, but to maximize goods and services with the minimal effort. The Tory plan for the sharing of Petro-Canada is the forerunner of the social credit national dividend. Those shares must be non-transferable in order that the mechanism be ready so that each will receive his due. And then, of course, they didn't do it. They got outvoted by Pierre Trudeau after nine months. There are those who will be content to live on their dividend, and there are those who will have the talent for the earning of new wealth. All new wealth that they score will be credited to them and made available to anyone who wishes to buy it. Houses will now be bought and repaid only as fast as they depreciate. That creates a whole new market for houses. All those homeless people, right? All those who in the past could afford to pay for a $40,000 house, but couldn't afford to pay for a $40,000 mortgage on it, can now buy since all they need is to pay the depreciation of the house over the years. Pay as you use. It maximizes the market for houses. The market for everything that is physically desirable is now maximized since if, if it can be done, it is done. We will have the perfect barter of energy wealth between people and over generations. If workers were paid in what they produced, there would be no strikes, depressions, shorter work week, unemployment, poverty. They would trade some of what they produce for better and better machines to produce more and more to trade so they would, and so have work for themselves. There would be no trouble getting that tractor if we didn't use money as a medium of exchange. Good old barter, just like in Argentina where they had to accept farmers' IOUs for grain for those tractors. They would give some produce in return for fire and police protection, but they would make sure that none of it is wasted. They would give some to the less fortunate, but would first insist that these people try to help themselves. Workmen would then have the balance to trade for whatever comforts and luxuries they want. Then everyone could work because everyone would want more to trade for more things wanted with better products. And who would strike?
any slow down tax interest device old machine which prevents you from having more of your best to trade is destroying your standard of living because you spend your pay on what society produces you can't be paid in any other way than with production or title to it it is trucks and TVs for oil and bananas. The solution to the trade deficit is to create more wealth, not less, as advocated by the banks. They tell us to our face that they're trying to slow down the economy to match what their money dial says we should be doing. 